What we're going to work with in this lecture is what we call a print spool file. This is a typical type of file that you might see from a legacy system. And essentially what this is doing is it's listing account information in a page format. So you notice that the account information covers several lines of data. You also notice that every page number has a header. Well, all this information, while is good from a visual perspective as we were to look at it, it's not so easy to work with when we're working with relationships and data analytics in a system such as IDEA. IDEA has the ability to actually take this data and to create a data file that has rows and columns that we can work with in terms of relationships. So let's go into our IDEA file. This is the project that we have been working on, and you notice that we have the accounts receivable file open. But what we want to do is we want to upload the print spool file that we were just looking at and turn this into a file that looks very similar to what you see right here. So how do we do this? Well, if we are in the file mode, we click desktop, and we need to identify the type of file that we are going to upload. We're going to upload a print report and Adobe PDF. So this is these print spool files that we're going to work with. We then identify the file, and this is the customer file. And if we want to change this, we can. But in fact, uh, what we want to do is we want to just work with this. So the file that we see here is, in fact, the very same file that we were seeing on the other screen. And again, we have account information, we have the account number, we have the account name, address, and credit limit. Now you notice that everything lines up, so you want to make sure that everything lines up. The other thing that you want to think about related to the account number is that this essentially is going to be the anchor that we're using in terms of capturing the other information. Well, we're going to use this anchor in such a way that we can actually build upon this and pick up only the lines that have similar information. So you notice that the account numbers are always four digits. You notice that the first digit of the account number is a letter, and the other three items are numbers. So we're going to use this information in terms of creating a trap, and from this we're going to be able to build the data file that we want to have. So using the left click on our mouse, is we're going to capture this line. Now I could capture everything, but for our purposes right now, really the only thing that we're interested in is the account number, the account name, and the credit limit. In another database, we'll actually show how we can actually collect the other information in such a way that we can use this. What it's asking is do we want to create a standard layer? And the answer is yes. So we click yes here. And what this is doing is this is picking up the information that we collected and putting it on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this information to work with. And as I had mentioned, is that we're going to create a trap using the account number. So right above the account number, we can do it a couple of different ways. We can take the pull down tab and the first item is going to be a text. Now you notice that when we pick up the text, is that it is picking up the account information, but it's also picking up the account number or the heading, which we don't really want. So we want to continue this, and in the next case is we're going to use a numeric. And again, you notice that these items are here, numeric and numeric. So what we have here is all of our accounts are being picked up and the page headers are not showing up. So it looks like we did pick up everything, which is good. So what we now want to do is we want to create headers for each of the bits of information that we're looking for. So the first item of the header that we want is the account number. So when we highlight the account number is what we have over here are field details and you notice that the type of the field is character. The name defaults to the very first number that we're using or the very first set of characters that we have, which we want to change this. So we're going to change this to account number. 
Now, we're going to pick up the name and the name. You notice that we're picking up all the names here. And it looks like this person was a movie buff that wrote up uh, these account numbers. Uh, but what we have here is we have customer name. And again, not so much interested in the account address, but we are going to just pick this up anyways. And in another video, we'll actually show how we actually can use all this information for other purposes and actually create a file that actually has a line or a column for each of the lines in the address. But we're not interested in that right now. So in this case, we're just gonna call this address. And then the last item is the account number, or excuse me, the credit limit. So the credit limit, we wanna make sure that we've captured this correctly. You notice that there are one, two, three, four, five digits that we are capturing. So there's no credit limit that's greater than $99,000. Those are the kinds of things that you need to watch for. You also notice that in the field details is that this is being set up as numeric. So we actually want this to be numeric because what we're going to do is we're going to compare the actual transactions from accounts with the credit limit and make some judgments based upon this. So in this case, we're going to call this credit limit. This is what we have now, is we have one, two, three, four columns, and we have set this up in such a way that what's taking place is only the accounts are actually showing up. And these are actually going to be the accounts that are going to transfer over into a, a data file that we're going to be very familiar with. A couple things that we want to do related to this is we want to just verify that everything is okay. Once we have created the layer that we want is we want to accept the layer. So the check mark here is to accept the layer. So what you notice is now everything is showing up. But you also notice that we maybe didn't do such a great job because some of this information doesn't show up. So at this point, what we would like to do is actually scan for errors. So the scan for error button is always hard to find, but it's, over, it's right under fields. So we're going to scan for errors. And basically what this is saying is that the width of the field address does not appear to be correct. Use the edit mode to change this. So we want to change the, this, just tend to look this down here, see if that's, still we need more, still we need more. And then the name, we notice that now we change this. Validation is complete. So we have all of this information. So again, what we've done is created the file. We have accepted the layer. Now at this point, there's a couple things that we can do. So before we import this into IDEA, what we want to do is we want to save the template. So we're going to save the template over here. And I had created this uh, before, so we're going to keep the same name. Once we've saved the template, we then import this into IDEA. So we proceed with the import and we're going to call this customer listing and finish. And the file that we're looking at here looks pretty good. Is we have the account numbers over here. We have the customer name. We have the first line of the address and really we're not going to be using the address at all in this project. And then we have the credit limit. The three key points that we are genuinely interested in in this project is looking at the account number, the customer name, and the credit limit. So I hope this helps in terms of your understanding of building this file. And in the next project, what we're going to do is we're going to start relating the information from this file over to the file from accounts receivable. So I thank you very much for your time.